Okay, this is the 21st lecture and we do continue our discussion on two port networks. As we did in the in the last lecture, the z parameters, the z parameters have four is a two by two matrix z11, z12, z21 and z22. And for reciprocal networks z12 is equal to z21 for reciprocal networks. And we have also seen how they are defined z11 and z22 are driving point impedances at ports 1 and 2 with the other port open circuited. Z11 is driving point impedance at port 1 with port 2 opened, open circuited and Z12 is equal to If I write the, yeah, it is a transfer function I1 Z11 plus I2 Z12. So, Z12 is V1 by I2 with I1 equal to 0. So, it is a transfer function between port 2 and port 1 with port 1 opened and Z21 is V2 by I1 with I2 equal to 0. Again, port 2 is open for this. And therefore, all these four parameters are measured with one of the ports open circuited and therefore, these are called open circuit parameters, sometimes called open circuit Z parameters. Okay. If Z12 is equal to Z21, if this is true that is reciprocity holds and if the network is 3 terminal, then a particularly simple equivalent circuit can be derived like this. Let us take the equations, defining equations V1 equal to I1 Z11 plus I2 Z12 and V2 equal to I, I1 Z, I should write 2 1, we assume reciprocity, therefore it is I1 Z12 plus I2 Z22 this is reciprocity has been assumed and is reciprocal. You see look at the first equation I can write this as I 1 Z 1 1 minus Z 1 2 I subtract I 1 Z 1 2 and add I 1 Z 1 2. So, I get I 1 plus I 2 multiplied by Z 1 2 agreed I have added I have subtracted this I 1 Z 1 2, I have added this I 1 Z 1 2. No question? And similarly in V 2, I can write I 1 plus I 2 Z 1 2 and then I must subtract I 2 Z 1 2. So, I write I 2 Z 2 2 minus Z 1 2. All right? No harm done. But this step shows that if I have three impedances like this Z11 minus Z12, then Z22 minus Z12 and the third impedance here which is exactly Z12, then this circuit, this network is is a 3 port network. If n is 3 port, if n is 3 terminal, if n is 3 terminal, then this equivalent circuit would be a physical equivalent circuit also. Otherwise, if n is 4 terminal, then this equivalent circuit is only mathematically equivalent to the equations. This is a representation of the mathematical equations. All right. This is called the Z parameter T equivalent circuit. It looks like a T, so it is called a T equivalent circuit of any fourth terminal network. The equivalent circuit has to be within inverted commas because it may not be physically equivalent. If the original network is fourth terminal, then it is not physically equivalent, it is only 
mathematically equivalent circuit. Nevertheless, this circuit, this equivalent circuit is of great help in finding out, in analyzing, analysis and synthesis of networks. As an example, let us take a T network. Okay. Let us say Z A, okay, let us take Z 1, Z 2 and Z 3. This is port 1 and this is port 2. Okay. We are required to find out the Z parameters of this circuit. One of the ways is go back to definition. Whenever in doubt, go back to the roots. Okay. Let us apply the definition. Z11 as you know is the driving point impedance at port 1 with port 2 opened. If this is kept open, then obviously Z11 is simply equal to Z1 plus Z3. Agreed? Okay. Similarly, you can see that Z22 would be simply equal to Z2 plus Z3. Z22 is impedance looking into this port, port 2 with port 1 opened and therefore it is simply Z2 plus Z3, Z2 plus Z3. Agreed? Let us look at the other two parameters. This is the network Z1, Z2, Z3. To find out Z12, you recall the definition of Z12, it is V1 divided by I2 with I1 equal to 0 and therefore, we keep this open and we find out V1 with a current generator I2 here. Obviously, since this is open, there is no drop in Z1. So, this V1 is the same as the drop across this and therefore, this is simply equal to Z3, simply Z3. V1 divided by I2, I2 Z3 is equal to V1. So, V1 by I2 is simply Z3. And by the same token, if you interchange the current generator and the response, you will get this also as equal to Z21. All right. Now, another way, this is by applying definition, another way would be to compare this network with the equivalent network. The equivalent, mathematical equivalence was Z11 minus Z12, this was Z22 minus Z12 and this was Z12. So, immediately you identify Z12 as equal to Z3 and therefore, Z11 is Z1 plus Z3, Z22 is Z2 plus Z3. All right. This is one of the uses of the equivalent circuit. It is a very simple case, so uh, there is no problem. But suppose <coughs> you have a more complicated network in which um, there are let us say k number of k plus 2 number of nodes more complicated network and you cannot obtain this by inspection or by uh, finding out the input impedance. For example, finding out input impedance is also a problem. Let me show you an example. Suppose you have a network like this. Suppose you have a network like this. Let us say R1, R2, R3, C1, C2, C3 and if you are required to find out <coughs> the open circuit parameters, the Z parameters. To find out Z11, you keep this open and find out the impedance looking here. Can you calculate this out by inspection? No way, no way. You know this is not open, there is a path here and therefore, by inspection it is impossible to find. What do you do? That is the question. How do you find Z11? The thing to do is to use node equations for analysis and let us do it systematically. Node equations. For a complicated network in which one cannot find out the Z parameters by inspection, 
one uses node equations and <coughs> we look at the network like this. <coughs> we have n and we have two ports which are available. So, to the two ports I connect two current generators I 1 and I 2. These are after all the independent variables I 1 and I 2 and we identify this as one of the nodes we call this V 1. This as one of the nodes call this V 2 and so on. Okay. Well, V 1 is between this point and this point, V 2 is between this point and this point and so on. And let us say these are the external nodes. Let us say there are other nodes inside the network, we call them V 3, V 4, 2, let us say V k. There are k plus 2 nodes. Okay. Hmm? No, there are two outside. Okay. V3, V4. No, internal internal nodes are this. Okay, internal node nodes are this. Now, you can write node equations, and the first two shall be I1, I2. There are generators. There are no other generators inside, and therefore zero and so on 0 equal to this. Now, <coughs> I 1 will be a function in general will be a function of all the node voltages okay? and they shall be linearly related and therefore, I can write V 1 some y 1 1 some admittance because it is a current each term must be of the dimension of current some admittance, I will explain these admittances later plus V 2 Y 1 2 plus etcetera plus V k Y 1 k all right. The, all these coefficients must be admittances. Similarly, here I get V 1 Y 2 1 plus V 2 Y 2 2 plus etcetera plus V k Y 2 k the third one third node there is no source there and I write 0 equal to V 1 Y 3 1 plus etcetera plus V k Y 3 k and the final node equation the kth node shall be V 1 Y k 1 plus etcetera plus V k Y k k. This is the general we will take an example later to show how this is obtained. But in general, I can write these equations. Now, in these equations, the constants that occur have two varieties. The subscripts may be the same, subscripts may be different. If you notice, if I write the y matrix, the matrix of coefficients, then the diagonal elements are all of the same two subscripts, that is of the form y i i. Okay? So, and the off diagonal elements, off diagonal elements are all with different subscripts i j type. Okay. Now, <coughs> y i i is if you recall how node equations are written is simply the sum of the admittances connected to that particular node. So, it is called self admittance of node i all right now y i j that is if i and j are different then y i j represents the admittance connected between nodes i and j so whenever you write the ith node equation y i j shall occur the jth node equation also y i j shall occur so this is the mutual admittance because it occurs, it is shared by two nodes, it is the mutual admittance of nodes i and j. All right? So yes. How do we define the diagonal if k is even? How do you define the diagonal? How do you define the diagonal? Any matrix shall have a diagonal. <laughs> Isn't that right? 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, this is the diagonal any matrix will have a diagonal. Okay. Sir, yeah. so this is a 
that FIA is some of the uh, admittance yes. connected to a node, and th this is uh, the FIA is the uh, ad admittance connected between the two nodes. Two nodes, I understand. Explain that a little bit. Oh, uh, we'll. You see, whenever you write a node equation, let's say between I and J, <coughs> suppose there is an element, let's say capital Y. Then, when you write the node equation for node I, you write V i minus V j multiplied by y. When you write the equation for j, you write V j minus V i multiplied by y. Okay? So, y is common to the node equations for node i as well as node j and this is why it is called a mutual admittance. One thing that should be clear is that if this element if the element or the combination of elements between I nodes i and j, if they are bilateral elements, then obviously y i j shall be the same as y j i. Isn't that right? If it is a diode, it will not be the case. If it is bilateral, then obviously y i j shall be equal to y j i. If the element consists of R, L and C, okay? and therefore, one thing that one, uh, use one immediately recognizes is that if the network is reciprocal, then the off diagonal elements in corresponding positions would be identical. That is y i j shall be equal to y j i. This also is a reflection of reciprocity. Okay. What we should now realize is that there are two kinds of elements in this matrix. One is the self admittance and the other is the mutual admittance. The mutual admittances of nodes i and j have one and only one value provided the elements composing the admittance are bilateral. Okay. In general therefore, I can write y i j as equal to g i j some conductance plus some capacitance s c i j plus 1 over s l i j. All right. In general, I can write it like this if R L C elements compose this. Now, if y i j, well obviously, this is a general case even if j equal to i, it is the same. All the uh, admittances connected to a particular node shall be of this form. There will be a conductance, there will be a capacitance, there will be an inductance. All right. So, all i j i may be equal to j, i may not be equal to j. Okay. But the fact that y i j equal to y j i also shows that this matrix y matrix the cofactors with corresponding subscripts shall also be equal. The cofactors are obtained by deleting a particular row and a particular column and therefore, del i j shall be equal to del j i. And you know how to find out del ij. You delete the ith row and the jth column and then determine the determinant and multiply by minus 1 to the power i plus j. All right. You must not miss that. And the, co the sign of a cofactor is extremely important. Okay. Now, let us see, uh, let's see an example. <coughs> No, we have not finished the discussion. You see, what I wrote was that V1, I am sorry, I1, I2, 0, 0, 0. Now, I write this set of equations in matrix form. This is equal to <coughs> the Y matrix Y11 to Y1K, uh, Y21, Y2K and y k 1, y k k, I am not writing the intermediate values multiplied by v 1, v 2, v k. And <coughs> what we want to find out, you see ultimate, our aim was to find out the z parameters. Okay? So, we must express v 1 and v 2, we are not interested in the other node voltages, v 1 and v 2 in terms of I 1 and I 2 and obviously, if you see V 1 is del 1 1 by del where del is the admittance, del is the determinant of this admittance matrix 
multiplied by I 1 plus del what would be the subscript of this? No, I 1 and this is I 2 I am finding out V 1 del no it is 2 1 second row and the first column. Pardon me? They happen to be identical. Yes, they happen to be identical. But this procedure is general. Whether they are identical or not, it does not matter. Okay. And so, what I get is V1 equal to del 1 1 by del I1 plus del 2 1 by del I2. Similarly, V2 can be written as del 1 2 in general by del I1 plus del 2 2 by del I2. And you can see. <coughs> you can see that this is Z11, this is Z12, this is Z21 and this is Z22. This is the general procedure. If it is not possible to do it by inspection or <coughs> by simplification, there are simplifications which one can effect to be able to obtain the z parameters by inspection, but that we will do later. Yes, ma'am. Sir, so the example which you just taken, I think the the z11 and all the parameters could be determined by inspection. Could be determined by inspection. It's just two t's in parallel, therefore it would be. No, but then you have to simplify. You have to make a conversion. Mm -hmm. It's not by inspection. You have to convert the two t's into pi's, combine the two, and so on. We'll come to this. It's not inspection. Inspection means you do not have to look at, you do not have to write a single line of equation. Inspection means you just write down the results. It is not true for, a, for, a, for the example that I had taken. In fact, it is not true even for a very simple example. Let us take that example now, <coughs> where we shall uh, illustrate this procedure okay? by taking a simple pi network. Let us say we have three admittances y a y c and y b. This is my network and I am required to find out the z parameters. You notice that we do require calculation. <coughs> if we keep this open, here it is possible to write down by inspection. It is not that it is very difficult, but you can see that if we keep it open, then the input admittance would be y a plus y c y b divided by y c plus y b. Okay? And similarly, I can find out z 2 2 and so on, but it would be instructive to do it by the node analysis. Let us do that. We have a v 1, well we have a current generator i 1 here. We are doing it only to illustrate the general procedure. There are many ways of finding the z parameters of this and i2 and what we are required to find out is v1 and v2. Let us write the two node equations. There are only two nodes which for which equations have to be written this one and this one and you see <coughs> i1 therefore is equal to what is the self admittance of this node sum of all the admittances that is y a plus y c. So, y a plus y c multiplied by v 1, then self mutual admittance is the admittance connected between nodes 1 and 2 and that is y c will come with a negative sign minus y c times v 2, is not that right? The current entering here is the current going through this plus the current going through this and this current is v 1 y a and this current is v 1 minus v 2 y c. That is how I get y a plus y c v 1 minus y c v 2. Is this point clear? No? Okay. Let us write K C L at this node. What do I get? I 1 equal to v 1 y a v 1 y a plus v 1 minus v 2 y c which is exactly the same as this equation. 
the general principle? What oh, general mean? principle is if both of them are considered positive V1 and V2, then the mutual admittance will come with a negative sign. That is it. Always. Yes. Suppose V2 was considered this is <coughs> negative and this is positive, then things would have been different. So, how do we take the self admittance? Self admittance is simply the sum of all the admittances connected here. You see, this is Y A, this is Y C. And this is a current generator, so the self admittance is 0. Okay? And therefore, this is a simple way of writing equation self admittance and mutual admittance. So if there is any confusion, go ahead and write case here. So, for the mutual, you are going to see the direct connection between the two. That is correct. You cannot go around. No, no, no. If you go around another node, then the purpose is not served because you are going to make the uh, investigate the connection between this node and all other nodes in the circuit and therefore, you must not go indirectly, you must go directly. So, then in, in some cases some nodes may not be connected to the other node. In then the uh, corresponding term will be absent, no current goes so through that, corresponding term shall be absent, yes. Okay. Well, taking the self impedance, admittance, self -admittance. <laughs> we should take the sum of the two admittance attached to it. Two, three, four, I don't know. All the branches attached to this node. Take the admittances of all the branches attached to the node. Yes. Okay. In this case, uh, YC and YB won't come in series. No, they are not coming in series. No, they are connected like this. There is no change in connection. It is only that the mathematical equation describing it is in terms of self and mutual admittance. This is a matter of convenience. And as I said, if I, if you are in doubt, write KCL. It is always better to go to uh, the roots. For instance, the self inductance in this case between uh, voltage V i and V 2, mm. that is what gives us the second term Y C V 2, because it is connected between those two nodes. This is mutual then. Anything no, connected. So, but with respect to the first node. With respect to the, the first node. The term that we are getting there. Yes. That is in fact, uh, that is why we are taking up to the second node and we are relating it to the voltage V 2 because it is connected between V1 and V2. We have no alternative. This is dictated by KCL. As I said, I am writing KCL here, which is exactly the same as this. We have no choice. This is how it will come. And what I am telling you is a shortcut. That is, you do not have to write KCL every time. Just write self-admittance and mutual admittance. And the convention is that all polarities are this. There is a reference node. Obviously, the reference is here. With respect to this, all voltages are considered positive and therefore, mutual admittance will come in, in a negative term. So, if okay. there is further branching of YC, suppose one more is being connected. Here? So, after YC. After YC, there is one more. Yeah. Then the uh, self impedance at point 1 will be what? Will not change. Will not change. Because there is a node 2 here. Self admittance is from here to the next node, from here to the next node sum up all of this. Even the mutual won't change. Even the mutual won't change. Nothing will change. Because if you identify this as a node. But suppose, there is a question here. Suppose YA consisted of two admittances like this. YA1 and YA2. And this is not recognized as a node. Then you would have to take the total of this. Agree? Sir, so if, if between 1 and 2. If between 1 and 2. There is one more. Yeah. Then you add them. If there is y c 1 and there is y c 2, then the mutual y c 1 plus y c 2 shall figure in both self That's and mutual. All right. Okay. Now, we will come to further complications when we come to them. This is y c and this is y b and this is i 1, i 2 this is V 2 and this is V 1 and our equations are I 1 equal to Y A plus Y C times V 1 minus Y B V 2 and the second equation similarly I 2 would be Y C that is correct thank you Y C V 2 the second one would be mutual admittance remains the same minus Y C V 1 plus y b plus y c b okay and what i am trying to do now is to find out v1 and v2 you see v1 is del 
1 1 by del what is 1 1 first row first row and first column so it is y b plus y c divided by del whatever del is multiplied by i 1 plus again del here i 2 this would be del 2 1 or del 1 2 the sign here is negative and the sign of del 1 2 itself is negative so it is simply y c divided by del is that okay is this okay I have applied the same procedure I have not written the matrix I have done some I have omitted some steps similarly you can write v2 as equal to y c by del times i1 plus what shall you have here y a plus y c divided by del multiplied by i2 so you immediately identify z11 z12 z21 and z22 agree let me write this results this is obtained not by inspection but by node analysis and this was to illustrate the general procedure that you will follow in the case okay z11 is yb plus yc divided by del z12 equal to z21 is equal to yc divided by del and z21 i'm sorry z22 would be ya plus yc divided by del okay this is who, what what is the network let me draw the network network is um, we have a ya we have a yc and we have a yb what is del the determinant of the determinant of this it is y a plus y c multiplied by y b plus y c minus y c square so it is simply y a y b it is a cyclic summation of products y b y c plus y c y a all right suppose suppose this network this two port network is equivalent to with a question mark we will find the condition is equivalent to the T network like this 2 and 3 can you tell me if this is equivalent to this can you tell me the values of the T network elements obviously Z1 to Z21 which is Z3 and therefore Z3 let me write in a different color z3 must be equal to yc by del all right z3 is yc by del and this would be z11 minus z12 and therefore from this i get z1 equal to yb by del and third element no other alternative but to become y a by del and you see that in the process we have derived the conversion formula for equivalence between a pi and a t this is a pi to t conversion this looks like a pi and this is a t if these two networks are to be equivalent then the t network parameters can be obtained in terms of the pi network parameters and these are the following all that you need is to find out del and then elements independently yc yb and ye all right the interesting thing to notice is that z1 is related to yb z1 is related to yb the opposite end. z2 is related to ya okay in that sense there is a symmetry <coughs> Okay, there is a symmetry. Any question on this? We'll have plenty of occasions to use this equivalence in future. <coughs> the conditions when it is true is uh, that both of them must be three terminal. <laughs> both of them must be three terminal, not otherwise. Suppose we had another element here. No. 
then no way, they are not equivalent. Okay? It is only when it is exactly a pi and it is a pi if this is a short, this is a t if this is a short, they must be equivalent. Okay? We next go to the y parameters. And in y parameters, <coughs> as I have told you, the independent parameter, independent variables are V1 and V2, the two voltages, and the dependent variables are the currents I1 and I2. So, you relate I1 to V1 and V2. Obviously, if it is a linear network, then it should be a linear combination of V1 and V2 and the coefficients are termed I have to have the dimension of admittance they are termed y 1 1 and y 1 2. Similarly, <coughs> you say y 2 1 v 1 plus y 2 2 v 2 and if you look at the definition <coughs> y 1 1 is equal to I 1 by v 1 with v 2 equal to 0. V2 equal to 0 means short circuiting port 2 that is you have the network <coughs> this is the driving point admittance at port 1 I1 by V1 with port 2 short circuited. In a similar manner you can show that Y22 is I2 by V2 with V1 equal to 0. That means, it is the driving point admittance at port 2 <coughs> with port 1 short circuited. This is where you measure the driving point admittance with this short circuited. Okay. Then the other two parameters y 1 1 v 1 plus y 1 2 v 2 i 2 equal to y 2 1 v 1 plus y 2 2 v 2. Let us say y 1 2 this is equal to i 1 divided by v 2 with v 1 equal to 0 <coughs> which means that you measure the short circuit current at port 1 v 1 equal to 0 means let us see V 1 equal to 0 means you are short circuiting this no voltage can appear across a short circuit and you have to find I 1. Now, one of the common mistakes is that the direction of I 1 which direction should we take? It should go up this is I 1 you must not change the directions of the current and you have connected the voltage source here V 2. This ratio I 1 by V 2 shall be Y 1 2 and similarly for Y 2 1 it is I 2 by V 1 with V 2 equal to 0 that is you connect a V 1 this is the network short circuit this and measure this current current coming up all right. If you notice Y 1 1 and Y 2 2 are driving point parameters y 1 2 and y 2 1 are transfer admittances. Okay. Two of them are driving point and the two are transfer. In the same manner that we discussed in the case of the z parameters if the network is reciprocal if n is reciprocal then y 1 2 and y 2 1 shall be the same. Okay if n is reciprocal then y 1 2 shall be equal to y 2 1. Let us take an example. Let us take this pi network there is an admittance y c and there is an admittance y b here. If I apply the definition of Y11, Y11 is the driving point admittance with port 2 short circuited. If this is short circuited, 
then all that you get is y a and y c in parallel and therefore y 1 1 is y a plus y c all right is it clear what is y 1 1 y 1 1 is this admittance with this short circuited if you short circuit this obviously y b drops out of consideration so y a comes in parallel with y c and this is y 1 1 in a similar manner you can find out y 2 2 as equal to y b plus y c all right let us find out y 1 2 or y 2 1 y 1 2 for y 1 2 we shall connect a voltage source at port 2 y c and y a and what shall we do short circuit this and measure this current i 1 ok what do you think the current would be you see y b is in parallel with v 2 so it becomes ineffective v 2 and this voltage is 0 this also becomes ineffective so v 2 by y c would be equal to i 1 no v 2 y c no even that is not correct negative of that and therefore y 1 2 shall be equal to minus y c is that clear similarly y 2 1 is equal to minus y c let me write it down which will lead me to a very interesting results i have y a y c y b and i have shown that y 1 1 is equal to y a plus y c y 1 2 is equal to y 2 1 equal to minus y c and y 2 2 is equal to y b plus y c now <coughs> if i want to uh, replace this y a y c y b by the two port parameters let us see what happens what is y c y c is minus y 1 2 ok what is y a y a is obviously the sum of the two sum of the two so y 1 1 plus y 1 2 and y b is y 2 2 plus y 1 2 do not you see that we have we have obtained an equivalent circuit for a general network a three terminal equivalent circuit again either physical or mathematical depending on whether it is four terminal or three terminal as the case may be is the point clear a general now let me make a formal definition now but before that what i have derived is that a general two port can be represented physically or mathematically by three admittances like this minus y12 and this is y22 plus y12 okay this is what i have shown by referring to a simple example now let me make a formal derivation you see my equations were i1 equal to v1 y11 plus v2 y12 i can write this as v1 y11 plus y12 okay then minus y12 v1 minus v2 is that okay all right this is i1 and i2 i can write as minus y12 v1 minus v2 plus y22 plus y12 v2 is that okay No, this would be V2 minus V1. That is correct. 
is it okay all right because my other equation is i2 equal to y1 to v1 plus y1 to v1 plus y2 to v2 what i have done is i have added y1 to v2 i have subtracted y1 to v2 now don't you see that this is the same as these two equations are represented by the same as this v1 v2 this is i2 and this is i1 okay this <coughs> node equations, I am writing node equations. So, I 1 equal to this node multiplied by its self at node, the current through this plus current through this. The current through this is V 1 Y 1 1 plus Y 1 2 and the current through this is V 1 minus V 2 multiplied by minus Y 1 2 and therefore, this is formally established as the pi equivalent circuit of a general two port. The equivalent circuit would be a physical equivalent circuit if the general two port is three terminal. It is a mathematical equivalent circuit if the general port general two port is four terminal. All right. Excuse me sir, sir here we are getting y minus one two as one of the equivalent Why? Y minus one minus y one two. That is right. So, what is the physical significance of negative infinity? It may not be negative. You know, y1 to itself may be negative. There is no uh, physical significance of a negative impedance is uh, that it is negative. <laughs> there are possible to, it is possible to get negative resistance, negative inductance, negative capacity, no problem. You can have. Not with uh, coils and uh, parallel plates, we have to use active devices. Yeah. So, this you are mentioning about the, the this, this particular mathematical equivalence. That is correct. So, so, what kind of calculation can you make on that mathematical equivalence? Oh, any calculation if you are required to find out let us say this voltage or this voltage, no problem or the relationship between the voltages and currents, no problem. Because whatever do you do with those two equations, you can do with this circuit also. This is mathematical equivalent. So, then what is the problem with the physical thing? I mean, what is lacking? It, it may cannot be realized in that form because that was a four terminal one and this is a three terminal. That's, that's okay. Even if all these elements are positive, it will not be physical equivalent of the previous circuit because that was a four terminal one, this is a three terminal one. So, but we can carry all the calculations. You can carry all the calculations. Anything that you do with these two equations, you can do with this circuit also because this circuit represents only these two equations, mathematical equivalent. Now, <coughs> if it is not possible to calculate the y parameters by inspection, then what do you do? You do exactly the dual of what you did with z parameters. In the case of z parameters, you wrote node equations. Here, you shall write loop equations not loop, mesh, mesh equations. And in mesh equations, the coefficients would be, would have the dimension of impedance. That is, we shall have terms like z i j and z i i. And let me introduce these definitions, these terms that in loop in mesh equations z i i is the self impedance of loop i and by self impedance we simply mean you go round the mesh and just add go on adding the impedances. This is the self impedance of mesh i and z i j is the mutual impedance between meshes i and j that is the impedance which is common to meshes i and j and both of them both of them are of the form in general r i j plus s l i j plus 1 over s c i j all right so <clears throat> if you write mesh equations the matrix that you shall get would be of the form v1 v2 these are the only two sources that you connect all the rest are zero would be equal to 
z11 well let me make capital z 11 2 capital z 1k z 21 2 capital z 2k and so on z k 1 up to z k k multiplied by i 1 i 2 to i k this will be the type of equation set of equations that you get and whatever we have said about the y matrix the admittance matrix nodal admittance matrix also holds about the mesh impedance matrix. In other words the self impedances occur along the diagonal and all off diagonal entries are mutual impedances they are equal z i j equal to z j i if the network consists of only bilateral elements that is if the network is reciprocal and therefore del i j shall also be equal to del j i where this del now refers to the determinant of the impedance matrix <coughs> not necessarily if you have a non reciprocal, if you have a non by unilateral element, then no, it is not true because current cannot flow equally well so, in both directions. Del IJ, you are just uh, eliminating the ith and j. Yeah, but if these elements are not equal, z21 is not equal to z12, then obviously they will not be equal. Okay, finally, what we do is we find out this currents i1 and i2 i1 would be del 1 1 by del multiplied by v1 plus del 2 1 by del multiplied by v2 from which you identify y1 and y2 i think this is a good point to stop we'll continue this on the tuesday tomorrow we shall be doing problem set